Hello, hello everybody. I hope you're all doing really well. Now, this morning uh, was kind of a, an exploratory trip. Uh, this is Triple Falls, which I've made a couple of videos of in the past. And uh, I noticed that, I think it was last year when I came here in the spring, that there were remnants of uh, wildflowers around this section here. More specifically, uh, Erythronium uh, revolutum, which is a, a pink fawn lily. Uh, they're quite unusual for British Columbia, and there are areas uh, in BC, especially on the island, where they grow in, in large groups. Uh, there's an area actually not far from Lake Cowichan, uh, where there's a, a, an ecological reserve where there's just a, a carpet of them on the floor. The, the unique thing about these pink fawn lilies is that they're very photogenic and also they seem to grow in uh, old growth forest areas or areas where there's lots of trees. So when you have a profusion of them and then you have lots of nice old trees or in this case a waterfall makes for a great foreground. Now, unfortunately, well, there's a couple of things going against me here. First of all, I think I'm a little bit too early because I don't see any uh, indication of wildflowers around here. And also this year, especially, we had uh, some days where we had a lot of rain and it looks like this whole area around here has been flooded and also washed out. So I have a feeling that a lot of the flowers that I saw a couple of years ago have now disappeared. So they're, they're all uh, bulbs, and I think the bulbs have been washed away, which is really unfortunate. Okay, so what am I going to talk about today then? Well, rather than just writing the morning off, uh, it just so happens that I got some new filters sent by uh, Breakthrough Photography. So I thought it might be useful to you to talk a little bit about filters and my use of filters. Now. I am affiliated with Breakthrough Photography. They do send me filters quite often. Whenever I need a new filter, they'll send me one. And any new products they come up with, including their tripods, they have sent me in the past. So whether you think my information is biased or not, I'll leave that up to you. Uh, but I, I did want to talk a little bit about some specific filters by Breakthrough that perhaps some of you might find useful. There are a lot of filter companies out there right now and to be honest with you, a lot of the filters that are coming out from, say, uh, Polar Pro, Lee filters, uh, Case filters, I mean, they're all great filters. So you can't really go wrong with those companies. And I'll leave a link down below to all the, the uh, filter companies that I know of. Now, generally speaking, if you are looking for filters, I would stay away from the really cheap uh, filters from say Amazon or or your local camera store because generally speaking those filters aren't usually that great and when you think about it you know if you're going to spend a couple of thousand dollars on a prime lens or, or a, a zoom lens and you want to get the best glass that you can possibly get and then you go and stick on a, a $20 filter it's really going to degrade your image quality so if you are going to use filters, then I'd highly recommend that you look into getting filters that are good quality, have really great uh, contrast, good coatings on them, and good color rendition. Now, for my own use, I only actually use uh, two or three different types of filters. And if I break it down even more, there's only really two filters that I use. And those two filters are polarizers and ND filters. And if I break that down even more, as far as ND filters go, I only really use the 10 stop ND filter. Now ND filters come in a, in a number of different strengths, uh, three stop, six stop, 10 stop, 15 stop, and there's probably others in there as well. I know that a lot of people like to use the lower uh, ND filters and that's fine. But for my own use, I just go with the, uh, the 10 stop ND filter for when I really, really want to slow that shutter speed down. Now, when it comes to the configuration of filters and, and how they attach to your lens, there are just dozens of different types and from all different manufacturers. For my own uses, I generally stick to the, uh, the screw-on filters. And the reason why is, well, first of all, they're lighter. 
they're less hassle to put on in most cases. The biggest drawback with the screw-on filters is that they do get stuck. Now, you may recall that I did a, a video, some of you may have seen it a couple of years ago, where I had the mitt test. Well, it wasn't really that uh, conclusive because really it, what it boils down to is temperature. If you put a filter on when it's cold out and you put it on a little bit too tight and then you go into a warmer environment with that filter still attached to your lens, then you're probably gonna have trouble getting that filter off, especially polarizers when the, the outer circumference turns. And of course, a lot of filters now, the screw-on ones are very thin, so it's really ha hard to get your, your hand on that filter and turn it. Now, as I mentioned, I just recently got a new set of filters for the Fuji GFX50. And the reason why I got new filters is that I didn't have any filters that fit some of the larger lenses. So when it comes to the screw-on filters, what I do is I'll buy filters that will fit the largest diameter lens that I have. In this case, it's 82 millimeters. And then any lenses that have a smaller circumference, I'll buy step-down rings for those filters. So currently for the Fuji, I have three lenses, and of course they all have different circumferences. So the widest is the, is the 23 millimeter, which takes 82 millimeter uh, filters. And then we have this lens here, which is a 32 to 64, that's 77 millimeters. And then I have a one to 200, which takes 67 uh, millimeter uh, filters. So I would buy 82 millimeter filters and then just buy step down rings for those. So you're not carrying all different sizes of, of filters. So other than just the, the 10 stop ND filter that I have, I also carry three different types of polarizers. And you're probably thinking, oh, three different types? Well, why would you need three, three different types? Well, I carry a regular polarizer, but I also have a couple of new polarizers that actually have ND filters built right into them. And the advantage to that is that you don't have to stack ND filters with a polarizer. So you're cutting down on the amount of glass that you have in front of your lens. And you know, the more filters you put in front of your lens, the more you're going to degrade the quality of your photograph. So with the ND filters, with the polarizers built into them, it enables you to slow that shutter speed down, especially with subjects like this, waterfalls, uh, when it might be a little bit bright out. I'll do this a lot. I'll, I'll come to a scene like this and I might think to myself, okay, well, I don't really need a polarizer, but I want to slow the shutter speed down and what I've done in the past is just put a polarizer on because the polarizer will cut that shutter speed down by one to two stops. But in a lot of cases, it just isn't enough. I want to slow it down even more. And even if you put the ISO down at its lowest setting and stop all the way down to F16 or F22, then sometimes I still can't get that shutter speed down slow enough. So what Breakthrough have done is they've, they've built in these ND filters right into the polarizer. And I use these quite often. So currently, Breakthrough have three different strengths of polarizer. They have the regular polarizer, which cuts down on about one to two stops. And then they have the three stop polarizer, which cuts down on three stops of light. And then they have the six stop, so even darker again. So they come in really handy when you come across a scene like this where you want to slow the shutter speed down. It's quite bright out, but you don't want to have to stack a whole bunch of filters to, to get to that uh, slower shutter speed. Now, another filter system that uh, Breakthrough does have that I've talked about a little bit in the past is their magnetic system. Now, I really love their magnetic system, but I am a little bit reluctant to talk about them because probably for the, about the past year or so, uh, every time you go to their website, they've been on back order. Now, I know that the guys at Breakthrough are working hard to try and get these filters out. They're trying to refine the design. So if you are interested in them, then you're going to have to be patient about them because I, I'm not sure when they, they are going to actually come out. But I can show you what they are and how they work, and it's a really cool system. Okay, so the way that this uh, magnetic filter system works is that you start off with uh, a universal ring. Now again, you would, you would purchase uh, 
for the largest lens that you have. Now, in this case, I only have a 77 millimeter threaded size uh, holder. Uh, if I was going to purchase again for this uh, uh, system, this Fuji system, then I would go for a, a larger a ring set and then just use step down rings again. And the way the filters work is this is a, a polarizer right here and it just uh, clips right in with the, with the magnets. And when you turn it, so you'll start turning the, uh, oops, the filter and you can see that the filter turns independently of the ring. It's actually turning the other way. Now, some of you are probably thinking, well, why would you bother even showing us this if you can't even buy it? Well, you may not be able to get it from um, a Breakthrough Photography, but there are a lot of companies now that are making these magnetic filters. I think Manfrotto are making them now, uh, Freewell. There's a whole bunch out there. So if you want to go ahead and buy them, you, you can get them. I have no idea what the filters are like. All that I know is that the, the Breakthrough Photography filters are exceptional quality and that's why I've kind of stuck with them even though uh, some of their filters are, are, are getting hard to get. The other unique thing about this, uh, this system is that if you're one of these people that still likes to use uh, split grad filters uh, or any other filters uh, that slide into a holder, then you can do so by using uh, their filter holder. So this holder here would actually just clip on to the, uh, the magnetic holder here. And then what you can do is say you want to uh, slip in a, a, an ND filter or a, a split grad filter or anything like that, then you can do so like Oops, like so. Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to hold, I need a third hand here. Like so. And the unique thing about this is that, okay, so you're probably thinking, well, isn't the whole system gonna turn when I turn the polarizer? Well, it doesn't, it turns independently. So as I turn the ring at the back, the polarizer inside is turning, but the outside diameter of this holder isn't turning. Now as cool as this system is, it's very well thought out, I personally don't use it. For the main reason being that it's just more stuff to carry. The, uh, the grad filters here, they're exceptional quality, but I don't use grad filters. I used to use them in my film days, but with digital photography, I, I just end up taking multiple exposures. So say I want to blend a sky in with a foreground, I'll take an exposure for the sky and then one for the foreground and blend them in that way. I just find I get better results than say using uh, a split grad like this. The problem with split grads is, is that it's a, a destructive workflow. So unless you have a, a flat horizon line, if you have mountains or anything like that, then you're going to get a lot of darkening in those areas. And that can be a problem when you're processing the images. Now, having said that, I do get it and I get the reasons why people use these. Ideally, it's nice to do as much as you can in camera, especially if you're not into sitting behind a computer and processing for hours a, on, at a time. Some people love it, some people don't like it. So if you don't like it, I would highly recommend that you get a system like this and then you can do as much in camera as possible without faffing around afterwards. But if you don't mind using a, a computer and you like to do a lot of processing, then uh, I would highly recommend that you just use either the, the magnetic filters or just the screw-on filters and just use them sparingly. That's the thing about filters is that I do use them very sparingly. I do know some people that will slap on a polarizer for pretty much every photograph. I don't. I, I use polarizers very rarely. I'll use them, like I said, for waterfalls if I want to slow the shutter speed down slower that I can get it with than without a polarizer. Uh, other times I'll use a polarizer if I want to get rid of some glare in foliage. But even then, I try to use them sparingly because I think what it does is they just flatten out the light completely. And if you have any specular highlights or any kind of sheen on, on foliage, then it kind of gets rid of, of some of that depth, in my mind anyway.
I think what it boils down to with filters at the end of the day is user experience. If you enjoy using filters and you enjoy the effects that they give you, then yeah, go ahead and use them. But if you just want to not be farting around with filters all the time, then I would highly recommend that you just get one or two filters like I have, say a polarizer and uh, uh, maybe an ND filter or two. And that's it, that's all you really need. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. It wasn't really what I had intended, but I figured, hey, why not talk a little bit about filters? Uh, I'll leave links down below to all the different filter companies that I can think of. The link to uh, Breakthrough Photography is an affiliate link. So if you do decide to purchase a filter from them, then I do make a little bit of money from that. So if you enjoyed the video, please be sure to give me a thumbs up. And if you didn't enjoy the video, be sure to give me a thumbs down and make sure you hit that thumbs down at least twice. All right, folks, thanks ever so much. And uh, until next time, bye for now.